It's time to use the fourth axis again, uh, this time to cut features that are on the side of the case, like here, the holes, and then the holes on the other side. Before I get into the, the fourth axis machining, I want to mention that uh, something that wasn't clear from the last episode, which is that I didn't make just one watch. I actually made six complete watches. Additionally, I had more cases than I made watches. And so some of the cases you can see, here's another case. Here's another case where I didn't get the depth quite right. So the ring that's supposed to hold the movement is paper thin and uh, various other attempts that I used to per perfect things before starting on the actual watches that I was going to deliver. I did actually have seven cases. Um, let me show you this case. So if you look on this side here, this had a defect, which is uh, this lug was not finished all the way. So I was not able to finish this case, but I could, I suppose, if I didn't care about that lug. I finished a total of six cases, as you can see here, that I sent to Thomas. Some of the cases went to Germany, some cases went to New York for some shows. Um, all the cases are now back in Milan, except for my case, or my watch, I should say, which is on its way back to me. But, you know, this time of year, things are slow, so it hasn't uh, gotten back yet. I realized that I could use the same fixture that I used to build the top of the watch to also mill the features that are on the side, such as the opening here for the stem and the stem tube, the openings for the holes for the clips that will hold the strap in place, um, etc. And so it will be like this to mill these three features and then rotate like so to mill these two features. Now to get that to work, I needed to set up a coordinate system. So the center of rotation goes right through the center of this ring right here. But in terms of the X0, I decided to use the back of this fixture. I could have used the front or some other location. I simply chose to use the back. Now to make this work in the fourth axis, I milled out these holes here, which are designed to fit over the jaws. And I have these recesses here so that I don't have to have a square corner on the edge here. The first step is to disassemble the fixture, taking off the inside diameter clamp so that I can put it back into the milling machine upside down, which will allow me to mill the slots for the fourth axis. Uh, and then I have to pick up the, the left and the back corner to make sure that the slots are aligned with the ID clamp on the front. This is using a 1 8 inch diameter flat end mill to cut the slots. This end mill is a little bit uh, long and so it shatters a little bit. I should probably buy a uh, shorter 1 8 inch diameter end mill. Okay, I'm going to see how this fits on there. So. Uh, I need to uh, close these up a little bit. And what I'm seeing is that uh, this distance here is not quite long enough. So uh, I want to measure this and then I'm gonna measure the inside there and uh, see how much I need to change it. Okay, so I'm measuring it at uh, 2.1285 inches. And then if I measure this, It's uh, also 2.128. So basically this is uh, probably within uh, thousandths of an inch. So I don't need to change it much, I don't think. So I'm gonna put it back into the vise and let's see, this is uh, the left corner, back left corner. So that means it goes in like so. Okay. Rather than change the width of the slot, I decided to just change the material to leave 
to a negative number to remove some material from all of the edges of the slots. All right, I took a half thousandth off of uh, each of the, uh, basically all the way around. And uh, let's see how that does. Okay, still not quite there. So I'll put it uh, back in and take another half thousandths off. Okay, after taking off a total of uh, one thousandth of an inch extra, it uh, fits in pretty snugly. There's no wiggle at all. Uh, so when I tighten this up, this is really firm. And the way I have it is that this dot should be in this corner here. So that means I can put this on and then uh, tighten it. And now my fixture is in place and ready for me to do the next operation. This ended up hitting the uh, screw here that moves the two jaws together. So what I did is I ground this down a little bit and uh, uh, now that uh, fits in there much nicer. Um, there we go. I'm using the back side of the fixture as the X is zero point. So here I am picking it up with the hammer, and then once I get it to zero, I set that as part zero in the Haas controller. For the Y zero, I want to use the center of rotation, which is the center of the fixture. So I pick up the front of the fixture and then set that as part zero and then go to the back of the fixture and then enter the midpoint as Y0 into the controller. And then for Z center, I'm just using three inches. I have the uh, jig mounted in the fourth axis and I've turned it about 90 degrees from its uh, resting position, or I should say the, uh, the uh, machine initialization position. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting this on here and it's pretty loose at the moment. So then what I need to do is uh, tighten this. And I want to get the stem hole roughly over this uh, line here so that when it drills through, it goes through that location. And then I'm going to tighten this in place. And it would be a little bit easier if I removed the device, but I'm just doing one right now, so that's okay. All right, so this is in place and uh, it's firmly held in position. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it. Oops, wrong one. I'll switch to A and then I'll rotate it around and I'm making sure that I don't see a gap anywhere around, which I don't. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I want to set up the uh, zero position. Uh, for the A axis. So that's the, the tilt this way. And I'm going to use these two lugs to uh, determine that position. Um, I'm filling on here and yep, that's good. Now I'm going to set up my indicator like so and get this set up. Okay, so that is uh, point, let me actually do point zero 0.02. That'll make the, uh, the math a little bit easier. Okay, and now I'm going to move it uh, to the other end. Okay, so what I'm discovering is that it wasn't even close. So let me uh, bring it down again. Okay, and go to the other side. Oh, 
All right, so now uh, this is 0 0.06 from 0 0.02, so that means we need to subtract uh, 0 0.04. So one, wait, divided by two. So we need to go to 0 0.04 by rotating the A. Okay, and this is probably not going to be exact, but uh, I'll move it back to 0 0.02, and let's try it on the other side. And that's basically 0 0.02 within uh, one thousandths of a of an inch. So that's pretty close. I'm going to just try to, to go by half of that to right there. Next thing I did want to do is I want to zero this. Now I've set it up to use uh, G59 so I don't mess with my G54 coordinates and this is set up so that uh, the Z height is correct and X and Y are correct. And this currently says 90 for the rotation but the actual rotation is 96.831. So when I press uh, parts at zero, it's going to copy this up to there, which it has just done. So now uh, with G59, this is going to be Z0, effectively that rotation. You'll notice here that the 1 8 inch diameter end mill is not coming down that quickly. And that's because I have the movement set to 25%. Whenever I'm doing an operation for the first time, I like to set the speed to a lot lower so that I don't crash into something, uh, which I've done before. This is using a 90 degree spot drill to create uh, small dimples where I want to drill holes. And that's particularly important for the clip holes for the, the band, the watch band, because of the 3D texture on them. If I don't spot the holes first, it breaks the drill. Ask me how I know. Because this is stainless steel, I wanted to avoid work hardening, so I'm drilling with a single continuous motion rather than using peck drilling. And the speed is calculated with uh, G-Wizard for stainless steel for this drill. Because this is a waterproof watch, there is a case tube, which is an insert that's press fit into here. So this is using a 1 16th inch diameter end mill to cut the hole to just the right size for a press fit. These are one millimeter holes for the clips for the band. And I'm using, therefore, a one millimeter drill, but I chose to use a carbide drill, thinking that that would be a better choice for stainless steel. Not sure it is, but they work fine. And then repeating the spotting and drilling of the one millimeter holes on the opposite side of the watch case. So that's the, the last set of operations on this case. There's also the back which screws on here and has the o-ring for waterproof seal. I'm going to be doing that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. Those type, all of those types of things uh, help the algorithms and help my channel grow. Thanks for watching and see you next time.